Uh, I hope it is visible to everyone. Okay. So, good evening. I welcome you all. And uh, I'm Dinesh Kumar. And I'm a developer from Harvard. So, uh, this talk, talk is primarily about uh, like walk you through some of the concepts and uh, mostly show some snippets of the code and uh, sort of motivating you to. Uh, See what's in Python and uh, what's passionate about it. Uh, just a raise of hands, how many of us are uh, Python, like we know Python and we are good in Python? Okay. 
So, uh, so I have uh, this three basically split up into three sections: basics, intermediate, and more with my pet college sort of thing. Uh, walk you through most of it. Uh, so, seems like fifty percent of us uh, are beginners. So, I will also uh, have some beginning sort of thing. So, to walk you through. Initially, like any project, this 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 is not just for Python. Uh, though the ecosystem, uh, how you develop a project, how you develop uh, as part of a distributed team, and uh, how the project in a general perspective or generally the project, like how it happens, and what are the things that we can do or you make use of some tools uh, so that it helps you those sort of things. Right. So uh, first is linkers. Everybody wants to write some cool code, but you cannot ensure that everybody writes in very specific conversion shape, right? So you might be writing some uh, some specific way, and I might write in some other way. Uh, but if you go to some other pro some projects, right, really in a company, uh, you cannot have different code, which is completely different with person views. So that's why I think every language has its own conversion, and there are linkers available, which is. Uh, uh, it, it enforces you to make sure that like, you use those conventions if not to use a warning or error, those sort of things. So, to start with, uh, this is also visible, right? So uh, probably I'll show you next, but before that, like I have a different environment I'm spending, uh, showing you before the code, right? So most of the time, this is good, right? So you have linkers, but before that, you have different dependencies for your projects, and uh, you might be working on different versions of the Python projects, or you might be working on different projects which use different versions of different plugins or different packages to be stuck in Python. So, how you manage those? Finally, virtual entry is a tool which helps you to uh, have different versions of Python in the same machine. Also, it doesn't conflict with the other one. And it, it is very uh, easy to switch between different versions of Python. So, let's say Python 1 and Python version uh, 2.7.0, and then So here I am in uh, 3.5. So it's very simple, right? You might not have seen what happened, but really uh, there is... So this file, right? Uh, this tool uses this file and uh, it uses whatever the version and the virtual environment available in your system. So earlier I showed you these are my list of environments available in my system. And the moment I go in, it is switched into uh, this environment. And uh, so pip is the package manager, uh, some of you might know. Uh, so every library you can't uh, install it on your own or have it in the repository and then uh, keep sharing it with in, in network or something, right? Uh, you have to have a package manager build system sort of thing. And uh, you will include all your dependencies into that. And when you share uh, your project or when somebody comes to the project, all we have to do is run a setup or install the list of dependencies, right? So basically I'm tying up everything. Uh, I'll try to give a summary sort of thing. But so we have a virtual environment that, that comprises everything, which is the packages. And so generally the convention uh, of the Python projects is to have all your dependencies inside the requirements, right? So all I can do the moment I come into projects, I clone a project and then I install the list of requirements. Okay. So, and uh, one more thing is uh, test, right? Like, um, how many of us are aware of the test driven development? Anyone? Okay. So, uh, in, in projects, right, like, people come in and go, but your code stays. After a year of uh, lifetime of the project, your code base is very huge. So in that case, uh, you go in and then you want to develop a feature for the uh, client. Uh, 
uh, you are doing something, but how do you know that you are not breaking anything in the code? Or how do you know what you have to do? Or let's, basically there are multiple uh, advantages in the 3D, it's, it's a huge topic, but just to give you a glimpse, write test first and then uh, start writing the code later. So make sure that you write test first, what this test is for us. Uh, I have a test, a method, which returns me hello. So write a test for a method which returns, check whether it returns hello, then make sure it passes. So those are things, right? You have a test in place for the whole system that helps you, even if you change the code too much, if all the tests are passing, then you are happy. Okay? So we have linters, we have uh, tests, and we have virtual environment. And we, we also should have a continuous integration uh, or build system into our uh, projects. What I mean by that is, uh, Every time every developer they check in a code, uh, you should run the build, basically a, a, a process which ensures that you have you have followed all the conventions you have in your project and you didn't break any uh, any tests. And uh, though I mean the test can be anything, but you can basically impose anything into the build and the build then once everything is satisfied, it gives you the artifact or uh, generally, uh, Java pages in Java project to work that you can deploy into the production and your code is like that's what I Because you can't change something and then if something breaks, you cannot deploy into the production and the system, the site is down. You cannot do that. Right? So, you need to have a strict rules, and once you follow all the rules and it passes, then you, you can do anything with that. So, I have another project. So, uh, how many of us know Travis at least? Okay, so for this CA to run right, like I've said, you might be using a get, uh, you have a code, you make some changes, you commit everything. Uh, once you make changes, uh, we have some tool called Travis which runs online. And for every commit, you have a file which contains some commands and it runs and then make sure it passes. So you can check whether your uh, repository is having a green build or your test is passed, those sort of things. So this way, right, it just, I just mentioned uh, my project uses a Python tool of six. And what is the previous version? I installed the requirements type, right? that's what I said earlier. And I have a, uh, uh, Pepe is a linter tool. Basically in Python, we have different linters, uh, Pipe Lakes and uh, some other tools. So, Choosing which linters to use, your use it is again depending on the team members and what project you are working on. And this unit test is a module which runs the test. So basically, what it does is exactly what I said. You need to have an environment which with different versions and uh, install the requirements and stick to a convention with some uh, linters and run the test. Make sure you are being faster. So. So uh, I didn't have the earlier version of the Python, so I just changed the Python version to your code.
So it seems uh, I don't have any uh, issues with my uh, project uh, in the stock market or a pipe type. But the moment I change it to some other type, uh, I have a lot of issues. Uh, what it says is I expect this flag times it on blah blah blah. But it's all very uh, specific. About it. Let's say I install. And so another uh, linter. Uh, so what we have to do is, I mean, the linter is not uh, strictly followed. Like this is what we have to use. Uh, it, it depends on you because some linter is very uh, free and some linter is very strict. Rules. So we cannot adhere to that. Uh, it depends on the team members. Like some people might need something like that. So let me run this. Uh, so this says there's no issues, but. You have to try out different linters and see uh, what works for you. So I had some other linter, but I don't have it here. So what it says is, uh, I have a little file. So in this code, uh, over is no Python. Do you see any issues with this sort of line code? It's just three other simple number. It's very simple, but it's very trivial. But you can easily miss that you are defining a method list, uh, which is by Default available in Python. This is the list of numbers you can find that. The moment you overwrite it, you are missing that method. But these two linters that I've used, it didn't show me. But there are some other linters uh, that show you with like very deep analysis. Of so uh, that's that. So we saw linters and uh, you know that, that and this. Okay, uh, so just this kind of correctly. Is everyone aware of Java? Like, I think Java, you might be using it later, right? Uh, I mean, just a uh, simple thing, but positional argument uh, when we say, right? Uh, anyone know that? So what I do is uh, I have a method, very simple. This, is, uh, this will be very similar to what my definition would be. So I have a method which takes one positional argument and second positional argument. But I also have a keyboard argument which says uh, you can basically say call method, uh, this is first argument, this is second argument. You can pass this value first and then um, I'm just going to uh, So this is like you, this is a very clear thing, but uh, I'll show you uh, on the run like multiple features of this. Uh, like you can switch arguments, but all you need to know is uh, what arguments that you're asking. Because uh, I'll show you in the later part of the code that I have a lot of methods and I forgot what to pass in which question, but I know what is the argument, so I'll pass it properly. And uh, one more thing is uh, dynamic and it is interpreted by Python. Uh, Anyone can give explanation for that, like what, what does it mean? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm asking questions because like, probably you can question and then say something uh, other folks can discuss because if not, it's mostly going to be one way. Uh, it might be worrying for some other person. So try to uh, discuss and uh, like ask questions or share your thoughts. Anyone? Okay. Sorry. Uh, no, dynamic, static, uh, and interpreted languages versus compiling languages. Make use. error in a line, so all the other lines get executed. Okay. In a compilation language, like if you have an error, the entire program doesn't get compiled. Cool. Yeah. So in static and compiling languages are some other languages, uh, what you do is you compile first and then run later. So those cases, if you have similar, then uh, you can't do anything about it. You need to fix it first. But, but in this case, Python, uh, you will run the code and until you hit an error, this code is run. So also put it the other way, you, you cannot cast errors in the compiling and there is no such compiling process. Rather, uh, it is a run thing. Uh, in, in my case, it is a huge discussion uh, against uh, whether static type programming is good or uh, dynamic is good because dynamic is like you might have heard closure 
those sort of things. Static is people go towards Scala, Haskell, uh, purely functional programming languages, which are all static, which helps in uh, uh, development, productivity, higher time. Uh, it's a huge debate, but Python falls into the second category, dynamic and uh, uh, code compilation software. But there are always exceptions, meaning there are some compilers which you can compile and run the code so that it's faster. So, what this gives me is uh, you don't need to worry about what type it is. You, all you have to do is start writing methods and then take some argument and uh, deal with it. So, on the way, you are, you are too fast and then for scripts, right? Like Python is mostly used for script. It's, it's very simple to do something and then uh, you don't need to worry about the picture. Example, uh, I can say A, a is a 1 and also I can just say A and I can say A is 1 that 1 and then what is A? So I can even say this is A. So you don't need to worry about it, right? Like, Imagine if you are putting writing a program which is very crucial in the financial system. Uh, let's say it is calculating uh, the stock prices and the value and the margin of the company. Uh, then what is the type you are going to put for this stock price? Will you put an integer or will you put a floating point or is it going to be a big integer? If you miss something and if you miss some uh, minor uh, fractional values then you might end up in a big issue, right? So, I'm just putting out some example. Uh, so, this sort of thing, you don't need to worry about it in Python. That's one more point I had. So, coming to the convention, right? Uh, Java, how many of us know private methods? And what is your thoughts about it? Like, is private methods tool? Do uh, you need to write them more mostly in private methods? Or uh, public methods? What about it? Like, why do we need private methods? Any thoughts? Okay, uh, he was mentioning, uh, I don't want to expose this to external, uh, external, like I'm asking it as a library to some other clients. I don't want to expose this on the object, so I think that's right. And any other thoughts? Uh, can you read a little longer, please? Okay. Okay. So, uh, that point is mostly around Python over the TP so we don't need to worry about that. So, in Python, right, there is no connection uh, of Python, but you don't have Python, but you can easily call it. Uh, but still, there is a connection. Uh, have a prepend uh, underscore to your private method. Why this conversation matter? I mean, you don't need to care, but you can still have a method and uh, say it private, say it is private. You don't uh, use it in some other classes. But uh, I'll show you. So I have a code which is uh, to it, like I have my, uh, with so many methods, then at some point, right, I actually lost track uh, whether I'm using this method in inside or I'm using this method in other classes, seriously. Because I have so many things and uh, I didn't know whether, like, can I easily change this. So, following convention is not a rule, Python is more diverse, but it is helping you to uh, uh, say what exactly you mean there. It is easy for you to know, hey, uh, even without this, you will use it as a Python method, but how the other developer develop will know, right? So that's why you can mention uh, and uh, that plays a role, I would say. Okay. And uh, you, you might have, okay, so there are a lot of methods in Python. Uh, so I have a method, uh, I have a variable A, and if I do this, you can see uh, there is a lot of methods with two underscore scripts. So these methods are uh, internally used for, uh, used for the Python compiler or uh, any other uh, 
uh, process and mixed concept picture, so we are not supposed to uh, uh, use it. So I'm just saying because it's an example for the convention, but still there is no restriction as such. Uh, you know, you shouldn't call uh, this for uh, it, it doesn't restrict you. That's what I'm saying. So you can still do this. It, it doesn't restrict you, but in other languages it does. Uh, you might not be seeing the value of it, but I'll show you a better code there. Uh, I'm using the internal uh, methods where uh, you process the method and then you take some metadata out of it. Okay. So, so what I'm on a summary to this, what I'm saying is. Uh, you need to have a project. When, when you start building a project, it's not purely about the code, right? Uh, you have to build a, have an ecosystem, like have a builder in place, have a linter in place, and have a, a, good, a good conventions and agree upon your team members what you have to do, and have a CA uh, build which runs every time. So that it is very easy for you on the way, like in the beginning, it might be easy one or two things, but on a bigger project, right? You need to have those set of tools in place so that it really helps you. It, it will come in handy in a lot of things. So, um, so any questions, right, please do ask because I'm um, assuming that you understood whatever I have said and I'm keeping keep on moving. So if there is any questions, please ask. So till now, any questions? Who, or uh, even uh, I can take the questions later on and then go to this way to ask the questions. So. Okay. Uh, so everybody uh, is like have done some code like sometime or some type of code. I can assume that, right? Okay. So let's say uh, I define two numbers, simple numbers. One is increment and the other one is decrement. It takes in a number, increments it, decrements it, as nothing else. Okay. So how many of us like use this documentation for the code and you can get tools or why you need it? Pause. Yeah. Like any pass. Yeah, it, it gives a view on uh, all your methods in a single place so that you could refer at a future point of time if you have clear documentation in the code. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so, sort of an explanation for the code, what we have, right? You might be writing some code, but uh, what this code does, you might be writing it in a very cryptic way or uh, somebody other than the context doesn't know it. So, you have a comment or you have a documentation for those code that you have so that others can think about it and understand. But again, there is a huge debate against it, whether people need to write code or you have to change the code in such a way that it is understandable. So clean code. So there are again two people uh, arguing about it. So what this does is uh, um, I have a meta class. What this class does is uh, it decorates the method. What I mean by decorating is uh, you have a function, uh, it does something, but when you say you decorate it, you add more functionalities to it. So, example is uh, you might have seen at test, at test in your uh, test space, Java, or at any other annotations. Why is it? Why do you need it? Any thoughts? Uh, pass some info to the compilers. And then, so so you you are seeing a lot of annotations, right? And then it does some magic for it. Uh, if you would have used Spring, you would be seeing Open, and uh, if you would have used other languages, you will be seeing Art. Uh, in Scala, there is a uh, if you like have a method run faster, you have annotations. So what this annotation does is you don't need to write code, but in behind the hood, what happens is there is some tools which changes your function or 
which had an arch more than most of the year ago. So that's what I am um, trying to explain. So if you can understand this story, like just let me know, like because I'm, I think that I'm explaining too much. And if you don't understand, please do interrupt and ask questions. So it's simple, right? Like I have two methods, okay? And I have an annotation called cool, okay? And I define this cool because you are seeing every day a test, but we don't know what the test does. Because there is a source code behind it, like that tells you what that test means. So similarly, I need to tell what is this tool, this annotation. So this is what it does. Uh, this is just you don't need to worry about what this function is. You can anything. Okay. So what this does is uh, this is a decorator function that you can return when this school is given an option. Okay. So I am basically saying giving a cool uh, with my function and this will be my uh, decorator function. So all this does is uh, it passes in my function increment to another function and it returns me this function. Okay. So forget about this, right? Like, forget about this. All it does is, uh, I can say this. Uh, you pass your function to some other function. That function do something, and then it returns some other function. All the thing. Okay. Yeah, that's what I I have here. No, it can be anything. I'm putting some code and as an example, you can define anything for your use case. But cool, what it does is it takes an option and it adds some, it does some change. That's all. Yeah, that's yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's say. Uh, And we'll just take these two and then import it. So I'm just importing uh, everything from decorator demo that's my tying if you notice. Uh, decorator demo that's my tying. I'm importing everything on it. You see the difference. You notice this, right? Got it. So I'm saying take this method and then decorate it. And whatever you have it here, uh, that is executed. So this is basically equal to decorate. Let's say I define some other method and then decorate. Okay. And then I can say literary that can put. So what it does is it takes a method and it decorates that and then it returns an option. 
So Pinterest feed has become the same method, but uh, what you have to do or what is the purpose of the tool you should be doing that inside the directed method. So this one right, uh, I'll take you through meta class first. I've defined a class called meta and I have a, a dictionary, this is dictionary in Python. And uh, I have another method called call. A function is basically called right, that call. What I do is uh, I increment the method count of the function. So what is what I'm doing uh, for with this tool method is I'm doing two things. One is uh, I'm giving uh, some uh, predefined uh, documentation for the method. The other thing is uh, I'm having a method and then I'm having a counter saying uh, what is the number of times that this function is called. Uh, I mean, just imagine a use case, right? Like you might have a uh, hundred number of files, and out of that, one method is called thousands times. So in any case, if you have the uh, data, right, what you can do is basically go into the method and try to optimize it or make it run faster, make it understandable because this is the most commonly used method in your project. Just giving you a use case, right? Okay. So this. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll also explain uh, what is the syntax because I guess most of the people is not aware of Python syntax also. So I'm defining a class and I, whenever you see a depth, something, a colon, uh, it is a method. And this is annotation to talking about it. And uh, so whenever I access something in this method, this is basically called uh, static uh, things. So you will access that method without an instance basically. And this right, I've told you earlier, this is uh, something which you are not, not supposed to call, but I'm using it because if you see here, right, uh, decorate m, this is the decorated function, and we have got name, if I call this, what what was this method initiating was m, right? The same thing. So I'm doing that. And there's also one more thing. Uh, so in Python, right, how you define documentation is uh, with three uh, code starter and then uh, you define something. So this is basically a, a annotated method. If I say decrement dot doc, it will view uh, what is the uh, documentation for that method. Okay. So what this utility I'm trying to do is. Uh, Take out all the parameters of the method and then uh, create an automatic documentation. That's it. Okay. So So I was using a different version of Python because of this. Uh, it didn't have that. I was just going to move it from off. So I'm just looking whether uh, this is available uh, here. Uh, it doesn't seem so. So I'll just go to uh, I keep saying the Python version basically. Uh, if not, I'll just move on. Or I can start writing some other thing. So uh, I'll write the same adding comments, just the comments alone into this method. So I'll write a new decorated 
new method. Okay, so it can take any arcs, arguments, and then uh, it return. Uh, what it does is it calls my uh, let's say it calls my uh, previous function, and then uh, I return decorator new method dot 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 commutation. Okay, and return decorator. New okay, so what this does is uh, it takes a uh, decorator, it takes a method, decorates it, and then adds document in cluster. And then I say, uh, define another method, define something. Okay, and then I decorate uh, this n, and then this uh, Okay, got it. So initially, if you see, right, this didn't have any documentation, but the moment I annotate with uh, something, uh, in this case, this is decorator, in this case, this is tool, uh, I have the documentation available for this. So you can extend this scenario to anything and then do something with it. So I had tried to take in the parameters of the function and then uh, put a documentation saying this takes this parameters. That's it. And then I also have maintained uh, a method method count. So whenever uh, you say uh, here, right, uh, this is called, you have incremental variable, so that you finally can know what is the method count, how many times this method is called. That's what I try to do. So, but you got what the decorator can do, right? Any questions? So now, Exactly. So now this picture, right? If you notice, you are seeing something at something, but basically this is again an annotation, and this static method is defined by Python. So this basically says you can call this method without an instance, and uh, there are something called class method. Uh, here I have a class. Python is very robust, so I'm gonna access something inside the class. So I have a class instance as part of the method. So I say class method. Then again, I can access a class for something. So here, in this case, max value was a, a, a class variable, like it is inside the class. So if you want to access that, you need to have the class. So these annotations, again, is defined by Python. No, uh, you have to read it on static method and uh, class methods. It's not creating uh, the thing. It just enables you to access it inside without the uh, uh, instance. Uh, example, like you might be having 10 employees, but all employees belong to one company. So in that case, that is a static variable, you can have a static variable inside the class, and saying uh, belongs to this company. So you don't need that into all the other instances. Basically, you are sharing that method to all the new instances. Okay. Uh, you can try to go and uh, read about it. Uh, it's, uh, Put a concept and you should be on it. Okay. So, this is what I have for decorator. Uh, before that, uh, anyone work with automating uh, your projects? Uh, deploying it automatically the moment you check in or uh, sorry. yes so you you generally is saying right like it's a, an example for uh, the uh, this is something like continuous integration what you can do with it is up to you uh, you can build a project or you can uh, compile something and run latest on it or uh, do automate exactly so automating right like uh, if you are uh, installing project in one person system, fine. But if your team have 100, 100 members and then every people comes in, then your project is very huge such that setting up it takes 10 days or I'm just saying. Uh, so, isn't it nice to have automated script so that all you have to do is set up and then wait for it and then your project is done or you can run it easily. So, there are uh, configuration uh, tools uh, which is available. Anyone aware of the automated tools which, which helps you in setting up the project? Anyone? 
Yeah, so we mentioned DevOps. DevOps is the person who is doing that. Like, so they are doing the job of setting up the project, automating it. But I'm asking about tools that enables you to do it. Okay, I'm not aware of the tool. Uh, anyone had a thought of Chef, Puppet, Ansible? Or simply cell scripts, like right? you have 10 uh, commands in your cell script. Whatever you are doing, put it in your cell script. So, what people can do is come in, or come in and then run the install or SSH file right? and then your project is set up. So, I had an example for that. Uh, so, I had a project for stop stop, which is the same thing I had earlier. And uh, I, I have an example of uh, Ansible. So Ansible is one of the uh, tools which enables you to automate it. But you can find, uh, go and look at the other tools that are solved. And uh, Chef is a huge very like, complex house solver and multiple clients. Uh, read about it, try to read about it. Uh, this script, right, what it does is, uh, whatever I've talked about earlier. So you need to install the dependencies. And uh, you need to have any environment so that you directly go and run the code. And you have a repository in your GitHub, right? Uh, clone that. Okay? So, this is what uh, it does. Uh, install the repo. And then, uh, based on, we can basically do this uh, based on the operating system model because uh, every command differs on. Uh, uh, each system, so you can define what you have to do depending on your operating system. And uh, install virtual environment. Okay. So when I say environment, basically uh, this comprises of uh, two things. One is what Python version I have to use. Okay. And the other one is uh, the environment, which is basically a uh, virtual environment is called in uh, Python virtual environment context. What this has is a pip list, basically a list of packages. So you have a Python version and you have a list of packages available. Uh, what you have is a go install the Python version first and then install the environment and then install the list of requirements in the and then that's it. This is a very simple project, but it, uh, it depends on the project. project so. Okay, so when you say automatically, like let's say uh, you have to do this in 100 machines, uh, you, you have a simple project app. Uh, uh, that app should be installed with your all machines in, the, in your office. You cannot go and sit in each and every machine and do that. So in that case, in that case also, uh, this really helps. So where you can use it, it will be different for you. So I, I say host all, but you can define which host to run. This is as in part of But this is the repository that my code is. Okay. And uh, I have a destination. When you see uh, this, this sort of syntax, this is basically referring to some other variable which is defined in the context. So in this case, this is basically uh, defined here. Okay. So in my desktop temp directory, what I'm saying as you can do is clone this repo. So in commands, it might be a git clone something, uh, but what this helps is this whatever tool, right, it has its own defined version of it. It can do uh, the process according to OS, also it does some uh, tweaking, those sort of things. So it installs this big repo. And uh, Yama is a package manager for uh, uh, CentOS or some other Linux distros. But Homebrew is a uh, Mac systems uh, that when you install something, you use Brew into the Mac, that is very specific to Mac. What I'm doing is just an example is uh, if my operating system is dark, dark, and this is a family which it belongs, uh, the answer will have a stop, it's on OS family and whatever the resources are there. So if it is uh, dark, install this with YAM. If it is, uh, uh, again, I, I try to run it in multiple places, so I'm just making sure that uh, this works in the two versions, just an example. And if this is not Darwin, do this with YAM. If this is Darwin, uh, do this with Homebrew. And what I have to install is PyNV and PyNV virtual and that's, that's the tool, two tools which is available. Okay. And uh, so this basically is uh, PyNV version.
It is still basically what are the vital machines are available. And uh, what I had a conversation in my project is dot uh, pi or something pi dot version that how what is this Python version that we can use and uh, dot Python Python version with, with, which is the name of the virtual environment that we can have. So if I uh, go to here, this have two dot seven and this have the name of the uh, virtual environment that you have to use. Okay. So what this does is uh, list list of versions and then uh, grips for the Python version. So it lists uh, versions here. It lists list of versions. And then uh, checks whether the whatever the version you have mentioned is available. Uh, if, then it puts this into a variable. So what it does is if you don't have the version, then install it. That's it. So and then finally this example, uh, this command is uh, install the list of requirements. This is a shell command. That's it. So I install the I install the environment, I install the requirements, and then that's your done set set up the part. I can try running the showing you that. I'll go here and make sure uh, I don't have anything here. This might fail because I have multiple environments uh, in my system at last time, but I'll just try here. Okay. I'm running this is actually future part. So it does the setup if I show the job. Uh, what this gives you is if, if it is already installed, if you don't install it, uh, if the version already matches, it doesn't work. Because if your file is complex, you might be doing two dozen steps. Out of that, you cannot do two case steps every time. So in any case, it's very helpful to do like cross check whether it is available, then you won't do it. It saves you time to start. So once I done, I'll ask it to this last step. Uh, I'll go into desktop and uh, so now we see I have a stop and then uh, so this 2.7 I had it already. Okay. So it also added uh, uh, environment into this. Okay. So now I can basically uh, So I, this this last step failed because I have a config version. Uh, the moment you have the config version, right, uh, it will have also all the list of the dependencies available. Uh, let's say um, probably I can stick that. But uh, what I'm trying to say is all this is set up just using script. You, you can explore different options. That's what. Uh, why I brought an example of Ansible is uh, what you have seen here, right? Uh, this git. Or this yum, everything is called task, and this is defined again in Python. You can explore and see. So, so this is also a simple thing, but behind the door is done by Python. Okay. So I am trying to show you a list of components so that uh, I can show you uh, the project which I had uh, that involves multiple components. Uh, but see, if you stop me and ask questions, that that enables me to make sure that we want to do everything. Okay. So we have that. So sockets, anyone, I guess, thoughts? You might be using sockets. Every day you might be using sockets, right? No? Sorry? Sockets of any assets. Okay. Okay, you're uh, transferring data. How do you do uh, that? You, anyone use chat? Anyone use chat, right? So everything, like you do something, it passes the data, it, it uses socket and then it, it, the implementation of socket it uses, it, it differs. But socket is basically uh, it enables you to uh, uh, pass the data. So you basically have server and you can have multiple lines. So the server can receive it and broadcast. There is also some other concept called broadcasting, like when you send an message, then it is uh, received all the uh, members in the group. So socket. 
is the uh, implementation behind whatever chat line or uh, chat programs or Slack or anything it is uh, which is there uh, behind it. That is an implementation I can show you some code. Uh, So uh, when you say socket, right, uh, you need two information. One is uh, what is the IP address, uh, which you have to bind to, also the port where you will bind it to. So that uh, when the clients, you have different clients, uh, you look for that particular IP address and look for the port and then connect to it and then pass for the data to and from. Uh, why IP address? Because it is unique and also port number because you might be running multiple ports under the same machine. So that too uniquely identifies your process which is running in any machine. Okay, so this is like you can implement it and then anyone in the world can use it. So that's fine. So what this does is um, I have uh, binding address. I have this in hard point. I will open the whole project now. If not, okay, I've defined the socket address, which is IP address, which is local host in this case, and I have defined one more port, and this is my binding address. And I created a TCP server. Uh, TCP is basically you create a connection and keep the connection alive, uh, send the data and receive it, then close the connection, that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to know the other part of it, it's called UDP. Uh, you can read about it. So this is creating a server, okay? And uh, this is doing serve for This is a syntax in uh, uh, Python, and it starts and running it for And what you have to do with the mother is basically with this. Uh, it receives a message and uh, it prints that and then it responds with some message. That's it. Okay, so here the request dot receive, this is one task which, is, which it is doing. And then uh, request dot send all this another task. So basically, it receives a message and it responds with some, message, some other message. And what I'm saying is basically, uh, uh, I'll, I'll show it in you some other context depending on what command I get and what we do. I'm returning responses based on that. And I'm also doing some. Not a piece I'll show you later. Like if I receive someone, I tell my system to do something. Okay, so, so simply put, it is receiving some commands and responding with you or uh, some other data. Okay, so if we go to client. So what this does is uh, it connects and then it connects to uh, uh, some socket. And again, the socket should be mentioned. So what address that I need to use again, you can see, like in server, you mentioned what is the binding address. Very similarly, you need to connect to the same thing, right? So you are connected to that. Uh, and then uh, here, you send the data, and then you receive the data the other way around. Correct? Cool? So, let me run this. So you can see, uh, uh, service started and okay. So this is the server, and uh, this is the client that I have. Uh, Okay, so this server received everything and uh, responded with me some data on. That's it. Cool. So, what message it receives and based on uh, what response you have to do, uh, I've defined it. Uh, I can show like here. Uh, So this message is there. So uh, what I try to do is uh, uh, I'll show you uh, is like I have a list of sentences 
uh, when you input this, it is converted to converted to some other command, and uh, it sends that. So when I say, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I'll leave you here. Okay, in the point. And here it is got a simple break. So why I'm doing this is, uh, I'll take you to the next step. Uh, Okay, so when I say, uh, are you speaking? Uh, I'm sending the connect. Okay, so the server does something uh, specific to that, uh, but I'm converting some sentences to a command and then sending it to the server. I'll just close it. Okay, I'll close the other So what I have in place is I have a, a voice uh, recognition uh, code. Uh, what it does is uh, it reads my uh, text. That's why I have a huge sentence because the one sentence cannot uh, easily identify. Uh, it takes in the voice commands and then it converts into the specific command I have mentioned here, and uh, it sends it, sends it across. Basically, it's like a voice recognition system, that sort of thing. Okay, so I will. So earlier I had a uh, input message from text, but I just changed this, okay, so that it recognizes my voice. Are you there? You got it. So. Initially, I had uh, some plan, but I read that and then uh, I'm sending it across by converting that into specific command which I have to create. Time. So, you can find something else. Yeah, we will try something here in the commands. Don't sleep. Okay, it will ping. Let's say by default I'm sending sending ping so that uh, it replies me something. Can you please stop? It didn't detect though. Can you fly? So you get it right. So I had different sentences mapped to a different command, and then uh, I send that command over so that I can use something over the period command. Uh, this, this particular place, uh, you can use uh, something called uh, NLP, uh, natural language processing. So what it does is uh, it takes in sentences and it analyzes uh, what you are trying to say, and then it can give you what the final subject is. Basically, you can say one thing in different sentences. Uh, are you there? Hey, are you? Or uh, uh, is this the place you are in? Something like that. The NLP can do that. So you can use that. So voice recognition, uh, uh, I may skip it because uh, I think it's too much. Uh, that I'm using something called uh, with.a. Uh, there are multiple uh, available things for converting into uh, speech to text. Uh, Google have it, Google exposes the API, but the limitation is you can hit it a number of times per day. And, uh, uh, IBM have some tools and uh, by default, uh, okay, so I'm not sure whether you have noticed uh, this, the response it came, uh, it, it responded back with voice. Not sure whether you noticed. Uh, that I'm using the default uh, max, uh, it's called like, when you ask it to say, uh, it responds to the response, I, I can see it around again. Are you there? Uh, not sure whether it heard it though, but you did hear something, right? So it responded, but I think this is the one. Are you there? 
Okay. So this is it again, right? Like uh, I'm just showing pieces, but you can imagine uh, putting all these pieces together uh, makes it a beautiful robot or something. Uh, you you're not gonna do uh, everything in like keyboard and do something like right? it's gonna be like uh, hey do this and then that's gonna do something and it's gonna and it's gonna respond to the voice. That's what I like to make here. Okay, so just a little bit more time to wait on. Okay. So I will quickly show you a uh, uh, demo sort of thing. What I have is a pet project. Uh, it uses all this, uh, all these things, and uh, I'm basically uh, using voice, voice recognition and then taking my input and then converting into the command and then sending it over with, this, with the help of sockets that you have seen. And uh, that server, what it does is. Uh, it connects to my software. I have a, a quad here. Uh, I can't uh, ensure that the, this will fly perfectly, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll just show you. And uh, based on the commands, I try to do something with the software. Uh, uh, I also had a code to uh, control this copter. Initially, how we started was uh, this. Quadcopter, right? It should be uh, controlled by controlled by a PS3 or uh, some other Xbox controllers, but I didn't have it, so I started with like why not have it like a game system where like you control it with the keyboard, but this was not stable, so I couldn't do much on it. But I have it there. I'll, I'll just show you the just the UI. So I wanted to walk you through with all the code, but since we are like beginners and different stuff people, uh, this this is the same program. But what it does is it can use GUI uh, to control it, or voice the voice recognition and control it, say what actions you have to do, or also I'm trying auto pilot, like just run it and then it runs, do something, something like that. Okay, so connected. Okay. So it's it's not stable though. Like I couldn't control much uh, because there's some weight issue in this, and also uh, it's not really easy to uh, master the piloting of the copter. Okay. So I I had controls like when you press direction up, down, left, right, uh, the copter will move in the direction. Uh, I can vary. Uh, Slow, uh, try moving slow though, so that I can I have uh, all the configurations like you can read about it, trust, yeah, pitch, roll. Uh, I've configured everything so that uh, you define something based on that. So, this is the offset I'm incrementing this by this value, basically. Uh, so now this is very slow. Though. I have it here. I'm not sure whether you can see it. So I had all the controls space for stopping, breaking, and queue for quitting, and uh, uh, whoever played the game, right, AWSD for movement and uh, left, right, up for the other control. Uh, this I had it, and this was the first step, right? Like, uh, try connecting and then make it fly. And the next step is uh, uh, automating how, what you have to do. And the other one was controlling the voice. Okay, so now I have the server listening for uh, some input. Uh, sorry, this takes the input though. And uh, we can give any inputs. Okay. Let's say, let's finish this for Are you there? Are you there? Yeah, that makes Hello, what's 
that's an all this is going to be Uh, so some, the language I'm using is to pick, uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so, so what I wanted to do was say connect and then say fly, it flies and then say fly right and then it's done. Fly, let's see whether it works. I don't think it works, I didn't even see the acknowledgement though. Say see you later. Uh, just let, let me write one more time. Uh, one more time. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, my just a point. Like, if you want to know this, okay. So this is a uh, like you are passing the key uh, to your program. Uh, generally, just a suggestion. Like don't take in any passwords or. Uh, any keys of the system that you can access. You see, I'm doing passing it as an environment variable and reading it. So, this is my private key, uh, the uh, key of my uh, with the API. Like, you send in the responses, this is mine. So, basically, don't say any that, right? Like, just put it up a point, it might have been. Okay. Uh, so, are you there? Uh, are you there? No, no, not. Let's try something else. Are you speaking? Yeah, it is speaking. Fly. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I heard. Like, I, I, I guess you basically got what I'm trying to do or uh, uh, like I, I have some more uh, uh, things to do which is like NLP put in NLP and uh, put video into this so that video processing once you do this uh, you can find the environment and uh, uh, do something accordingly like when you do auto right? like you need to avoid obstacles and uh, fly autonomous. So those are the video processes. Let's say you find a person and then do something on top of them. Follow them. There are a lot of startup projects which is like uh, selfies. Like, I guess mostly it's around selfie. I don't know. Uh, you make it fine and then you have a device on your own. It, it follows you and it takes a video. You know, what do you do? Whether you are surfing, uh, skating, whatever. Uh, this this uh, drone is uh, making a huge impact in uh, these days and there are a lot of projects which have come up. And just to mention, everything is fine. Uh, earlier, it used to be uh, like if you want to program uh, something uh, in in a software or some ropes, you need to know C or like embedded programming languages. Earlier, people used to do uh, assembly languages. Nowadays, it's very, it's becoming very simple. And, and Python is a pretty good in part, I would say. Uh, you cannot use Java or you cannot use Scala in, in such case, but Python you can write and then uh, you can control the uh, popular or any drones. You can actually use it to uh, write into Raspberry Pi or other things because people have lots of support for Python. It's, it's, it's really a huge big community. And also, uh, on other senses, right, you have a, a, a data, like big data is another pending thing. Uh, there are a lot of Python libraries, R is one example, and Pandas, uh, and uh, there are a lot of cool libraries in Python uh, that you can do. And even uh, video processing, right? Anyone heard of OpenCV? OpenCV, that is again uh, C, written in C, but people have written an app, which is something called Python CV. Uh, uh, what you have is Python code, and then it starts camera, and then you can recognize the objects and do something. So imagine everything is Python, you can do basically pretty much everything with it. And what you can do is basically it's up to you all, right? And how I started this was basically having a LAN and then, then um, try connecting. And now I'm in this place, how I So basically, in the future, I'm, I'll be flying it. So that's how I had like fly out with Python and online. So I would invite you to join and like all the new community and start learning and contributing. So yeah, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, you can ask me or and I'll pass in the references. I have some links. You can visit my uh, 
GitHub, or uh, you can be in uh, your uh, in, in my name. So uh, you can be in this. Uh, any feedback or anything, just give me questions. And uh, we, we love feedback, so we have sticky skill in the simulator. Uh, please do drop feedback so that we can improve or this is not good, what you would have expected or what you will expect in the next. So drop in the feedbacks. And thank you. Thank you all.